configuring database watchers data store to use real time intelligence in Microsoft Fabric on today's Tales from the Field. Everybody just do your thing. Wake up. Today's going to be a good day. Wake up. Today's going to be a good day. Wake up. Today's going to be a good day. A lot of exciting news and buzz around the Azure community these days. Database Watcher goes in the preview, one of my favorites. And Real Time Analytics gets renamed to Real Time Intelligence. Hey, if this is your first time finding us on Tales from the Field, give us a like and give us a subscribe. We drop content on Tales from the Field Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. On Tuesday, we have the roundtable where we share blogs, links, posts put together by you, the Azure Data community, or the Azure Data community. And on Mondays and Wednesdays, we have this thing we like to call MS Tech Bits. You're watching one of those now. Let's get over to it. In the series of Database Watcher, we've been talking about how we deployed it, how we could configure some of the items post-deployment, but I wanna to talk today about something exciting. We are going to change our data store and we're gonna point that to real-time intelligence in Microsoft Fabric. But before we do that, let's do a review of some of the configurations that we've gone through so far. Here on the screen, you're gonna see if we click on identity, system identity is still in preview here and the status of this needs to be on. So that is one of the requirements. And remember on that screen, object principle, we'll come back to that. We can click on manage private endpoints. We're not gonna go through the whole deployment, but let's go up here to add again and just look at some of the connectors or resource types we have. We have managed instance, key vaults, SQL servers, and clusters, Custo clusters that we can add our private endpoints to. We also have our SQL targets. Once again, we're not gonna walk through this fully again, but if we go up to add, you can see in my data estate here, I have a bunch of different SQL servers added, but if we hit add, we could add additional SQL databases, elastic pools, managed instances from our data state to, con to begin monitoring on. All right. The final item that I want to cover from a configuration standpoint within Database Watcher is the data store. Here on the screen, you can see we're connected to our Custo cluster, but our team has decided that we are going to fabric everything. Up on the top here, you can see that add and delete are grayed out. Keep that in mind. We'll cover that here in a bit. But we need to change our data store to point to real-time intelligence within Microsoft Fabric. And we're going to do that by creating an event house. Here on the screen, we've switched over to my workspace in Microsoft Fabric. I've created an event house ahead of time. And I've created a KQL database there, Database Watcher, inside my Database Watcher event house. This is important, right? We need to have this set up ahead of time. Before we can add our KQL database to our database watcher, we need to provide it access to the KQL database. And you can see here on the screen, I've run this command add database, database watcher. That is the name of the KQL database and the admins here as AAD app equals. Now that is the object ID from our database watcher. So we need to add that to this particular command. And how do we find that object ID? Well, let's switch back over to our database watcher and let's go up here to identity. Remember I said, hey, we're gonna come back to this object ID and there it is right there. That, there is our object principle ID. We're gonna go ahead and copy that from this screen and you're gonna paste that in here after the AAD app equals, right? And I have some X's in there to protect my object ID. And once that's run correctly, you're gonna see some information down at the bottom of your, your screen indicating that we successfully added access to our database watcher, to our KQL database in our event house within Fabric. Let's go ahead and close that out. And we're gonna switch back to database watcher and we're gonna go back here to our data store. Now, remember I called out add and delete or grayed out? Well, if we select our existing data store, that is our KQL database in our Azure Data Explorer cluster, we're going to go ahead and delete that. So let's go ahead and select delete. Once we select delete, we'll see a command at the top of the screen indicating the delete is taking place. 
And once this is cleaned up, what's the next step? Well, we want to add, we want to add our KQL database here to our database watcher on the screen. It's already indicating we had an Azure Data Explorer, but we're going to select on the real-time analytics, now real-time intelligence radio button there. It's going to provide me a set of KQL databases that I have access to. We're going to go ahead and select the database watcher KQL database. That's one we've granted access to there. Let's go ahead and select that. And once we go ahead and click add, it's going to add the data store. And once complete here on the screen, you're going to see that we are connected to our real time intelligence within Microsoft Fabric to our database watcher KQL database. All right. With that connected up, we're going to do a quick stop and we're going to do a quick start of our database watcher to kind of prime the pump there. And after a couple of minutes, inside your KQL database, you're going to see that it will create these tables for you. It's going to create our tables for the Azure SQL database, our elastic pools, and our managed instance. So we now can confirm that our database watcher is hooked up and monitoring. If we hit a quick refresh and look at that, we are once again monitoring our Azure SQL databases, our elastic pools, and our managed instances. But one more configuration I want to show you. Here on our KQL database, if we hit manage there, you can see right now we have unlimited retention. We may not want that. Your data rules may require that you keep less data, right? So in most cases, I set this to 35 days of retention period in my KQL database. And I cache about 14 or 15 days within. This is hot cache, so this is your data that's going to come back quicker when you query it within your database. Um, database watcher, but that will be all dependent within your environment. And there we have it. Our database watcher data store is now connected to our event house KQL database located in Microsoft Fabric, allowing us to use the newly named real-time intelligence. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy, right? Hey, you know where we like to keep this going in the comments down below. Let us know what you think about Database Watcher. Let us know what you think about the renaming to Real-Time Intelligence. And as always, be good to each other. Today's gonna be a good day. Yeah. Set your affirmations, aspirations. I got shit to do, the 